Good morning, everyone. Uh, we will give our fellow attendees a few more minutes to join in, so please hold. So good morning to you all and a warm welcome to Springer Nature Virtual eBook Summit. It's great to see that we have a great number of librarians joining us today from Eastern Europe, Central Asia, Middle East and Africa. Thank you very much for choosing to be with us today. Uh, many of you already know me. My name is Faryal Zubair. I'm the Customer Engagement Events Manager at Springer Nature. And today with me, I have my team uh, who will be presenting today uh, will be Swati Meherishi. She's Editorial Director, Books at Springer Nature. Then I have Valko von der Feld, Director, Book Solutions Portfolios at Springer Nature. And Natasha Pargas, Account Development Manager for Eastern Europe and Central Asia, Springer Nature. Lean Samara, Account Development Manager, Middle East at Springer Nature. And also at my I have with me uh, Mohammed Khalil. He is like institutional director of sales uh, for Middle East and uh, Africa. And I also have Maria uh, Markoa. She is uh, a director of sales for Eastern Europe and Central Asia. So welcome everyone. Uh, now we go, before we start with our presentations, I would like to go quickly through some housekeeping notices. Uh, we are holding the summit in Zoom meeting, which allows you all a lot of opportunities to interact with us, so kindly do so. You will be made, muted orally during the summit, but we welcome all your questions throughout the summit, which you should please um, add to the Q&A box during as well as after each session. Your questions will be addressed to our speakers in the last half an hour of the summit. Uh, however, please do keep in mind that due to time restraint, we might not be able to answer any of your questions. If you do have some uh, which are still left, we will get back to you soon. You can also share them in the survey form. So uh, please uh, keep the engagement going on. Uh, but be assured that you will not note down all your queries That's, uh, and our team will get back to you, right? Today's summit will be recorded, uh, the link to which will be sent to you shortly after a few days after the event. We will be also sharing a feedback form, as I told you, after the summit, and we would very much appreciate your feedback as soon as you're able to. Uh, please note if you are dropped out of the summit at any point, please use the same login details to log back in when you're ready. Okay, so now let's have a quick uh, recap of the agenda. Uh, in a while, Swati will give you an update on the ebooks uh, strategy update. Then uh, Walter will take further into the impact of ebook and collection development strategies. Uh, he will be talking more about into the ebook models we have at Springer Nature. Uh, then uh, at eleven, uh, my time. So after Walter, uh, we uh, Natasha will give you a quick demo on the library portal. On how to download the ebook user statistics, right? And then the last half an hour, we will be having a QA session with our panelists. Um, so uh, here we hope that you will very much um, enjoy the summit. You will get out of, uh, you know, get a, lo a lot out of this summit. And without further ado, I will hand it over to Swati. So I will stop sharing my screen, Swati, and please uh, you go ahead. Thanks, Fariel. Just give me a second to share my screen here. Can you see my screen now? Yes, please. It's everything. Perfect. Well. Hi. Um, good morning or good afternoon, everyone who's joined in. Thank you for uh, coming to the summit. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about how we acquire and develop our books. 
uh, that are then uh, acquired by and used inside the libraries, inside your institutions. And I'm going to give you also a glimpse into the new tools and technologies that we are using to enhance our content and how we are making sure that we are future ready and sustainable with our books content. So let's get started. Um, in the agenda today, we will look at how we develop and acquire books, um, then how we are focusing on uh, developing books content related to the sustainable development goals at Springer Nature, and how we develop our collections and what kind of books and products they are composed of. Uh, I'll touch upon how we are using artificial intelligence and machine learning tools for developing our content at Springer Nature. And finally, we look at open access books, which, uh, as you all know, is the future of academic publishing. So let's start with who we are and how we acquire our books at Springer Nature. So Springer Nature is one of the leading academic book publishers in the world. We publish about 13,000 new books across disciplines every year, which is larger than any other academic uh, publisher uh, in the world. And we pub also have all of our books available in on Springer Link as ebook uh, ebooks and uh, also available also in in print formats uh, on request. We also have a robust open access program with over 100 million plus chapter downloads. We have published approximately 3000 open access books since we started our open access book program. And we offer a lot of flexible solutions uh, to your organizations and institutions, which my colleague Walter will talk about um, after my presentation. So we are, as, as Springer Nature, we are over 180 years old in publishing. So what is new that we are doing compared to what we were doing 180 years ago? Well, I can tell you what has not changed. Content is still the primary uh, source uh, of pre, uh, visibility for our, con uh, for our books. We need to ensure that the content is still king, uh, which is a quote by Bill Gates that uh, one of my colleagues recently told me about. Bill Gates said content is king back in the, in the 80s. And uh, it has been true before that, and it continues to be true even now. So it's very important to us that we curate the content in our books to make sure that our audiences uh, and customers can benefit uh, the most out of it. And as we grow our content and we bring it to you, there is a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, this graphic, which was commissioned uh, by Springer Nature in 2018, uh, actually talks about what we do as publishers to plant ideas, nurture, propagate, and germinate them so that they can be bloomed and harvested in institutions and libraries. Uh, this is a very interesting graphic which shows all of the work that goes on behind the scenes, behind what all you see and what publishers and uh, services associated with publishers uh, deliver to ensure that the books can grow in libraries and in institutions and in the hands of our readers. So who are we? The books group at Springer Nature is approximately 400 editorial colleagues based across the world. A large number of these colleagues are based in uh, Europe and in Germany. Uh, traditionally, we grew out of that region, but we are also spread around the world to make sure we provide seamless services and connections to all our authors and partners across the globe. And how do we do that? Uh, we do that by engaging our communities at different uh, conferences, campuses, speaking engagements, uh, summits such as the one that I am talking to you at today. And let's look a little deeper into what we do. So the first picture that I wanna highlight here, this is a story in pictures of how our acquisitions editors across the world work is my uh, fellow editorial director, uh, Christoph Baumann, dealing with physics books. And he is presenting a book, a uh, handbook of neuroengineering to his author, Nitesh Thakur from uh, the University of Johns Hopkins at a conference. This is one form of engagement. Conferences are a very important avenue for us to meet our authors, to find new authors, to find new connects and learn about how developments are taking place in a particular field of research. 
Then we see another conference here where my colleague Sofia Costa, this time from Chemistry Books, is talking to authors explaining the book publishing process. We often have displays at campuses and conferences of our books so that people can come and look at the books in a particular field and feel uh, and also get a chance to engage with the editor who's handling the books display to learn more about the publication process. Then we have also engagements around launching a book, talking about a particular book, especially books that have specific applications for a particular community. So here we see a book launch at the European Geosciences meeting last year in, in 2023 in Vienna. And our author is uh, launching an open access book, which was published just before the meeting, which talks about uh, atmospheric simulation chambers. And there is a whole community and discussion around the book at such launches. Uh, I would like to showcase another book launch and a very important one for us. Uh, this is a book launch at the American Chemical Society meeting, which is one of the biggest chemistry um, academic societies in the world. This book was published in collaboration with ACS and it's called My, My Mom, the Chemistry Professor. And uh, this is very important to us because it talks about the journey of uh, high profile uh, chemists, female chemists throughout history and the struggles that women in STM have to face in their careers. So this is a very special and very important book. And this was being launched at the ACS uh, annual meeting. Finally, and you do see me in that picture, this is a campus visit. We also go to campuses. So that's uh, me together with our vice president of applied sciences books, James Finley, a meeting with a professor at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, discussing uh, book ideas for signal processing applications. And that's Professor KBS Hari, who is a professor at uh, IISC, and now also the head of the Center for Brain Research at the Indian Institute of Science. So how does our garden grow and what metrics do we use to look at what is happening in the books world? So we very closely monitor the performance of our books in terms of downloads, in terms of um, of abstracting and indexing services to look at previously published content, to look for authors and that are publishing in a particular field and all of the services uh, that are commonly used by academics are also used by publishing editors at Springer Nature to identify authors, to identify how a book is performing or to identify which fields are developing and need new content in them. We also have some very experienced people in our editorial team. Uh, here you see a snapshot of a meeting in 2017, also in Vienna, of the Applied Sciences Books team. And uh, you see here varied experiences, uh, lots of diversity, editors coming from all over the globe to meet together and brainstorm on ideas of what needs to be done for developing the book program in a particular field. We are also very, very uh, open to challenging the st status quo. It's very important for us that we are not only looking at the traditional way of publishing books and not only the traditional way of pre uh, presenting content, we treat our books as solutions. Every book offers a solution to a problem or to a gap in a particular field to a particular community. I, this could be academics, this could be professionals, or even in some cases, we publish books for the general public, yeah? And it's very important that we define how each book services each community. For instance, I'm going to give you a definition of what we do with our handbooks. Our handbooks are very important to help authors and editors uh, who want to assert and strengthen uh, their research and their position uh, within the community by collaborating with the best people in the field, expanding their network and making sure that they bring together a comprehensive uh, volume which can be used by the entire research community as a one-stop shop for the field. 
So we are very clear about the definition of each of our uh, product types, how our authors and editors benefit from these product types, and how the audiences or the readers uh, that you all also cater to as, um, as heads of libraries, uh, how they benefit from these offerings. How do we commission content and how do we publish it? A little snapshot on our publishing processes. Uh, through our author surveys, we know that authors are either proactively writing books. For example, an author decides to write a book and then they contact a publisher with an idea or they are reactively writing or composing books. That is when publishers invite authors to write a book. Uh, we find from our author surveys that the books that are finally published at Springer Nature actually come equally from both these routes. So 50% of the books we publish actually came in from the proactive author route where the author decided that they wanted to publish a book and they contacted us. And 50% of we, what we end up publishing was reactive, where we found the author, we found a gap, uh, we met the author at a conference, we met them at a campus, and then we invited them to publish a book in an area where we feel there is requirement of expert content. Once we go through the process of the author contacting us and delivering a proposal, the proposals are then peer reviewed. Uh, peer review is very important to us at Springer Nature across all our products and books are no exception. And based on the peer review comments, we then discuss and develop the proposal further with the author, and then they deliver the manuscript based on the agreement. Finally, this goes into production. Typical times for production can vary between three to nine months um, on an average, depending on the type and size of the book project involved. And once the book is published, we have a lot of tools for our authors, um, authors, institutions, and the communities to engage with the product, to also see who is using the product in terms of citations, in terms of social media mentions, uh, and how many times a product is downloaded. All of this data is available on the book's homepage on our platform. The proposal is very important to us because it defines for us what the book will contain in terms of content, and content is king, as I said at the beginning. And uh, who it will cater to. So it's very important for us to make sure that the book that comes to us uh, caters to the right audience. It is written for the right audience. If an author says they're writing an undergraduate textbook, it has to be geared to the understanding of undergraduate students. Uh, that's just an example. And we have multiple types of books and we have more detailed questions about what each book is doing, what it is covering, and who it is for. And based on that, we help our authors and editors develop the product so that it can be suitable for the right audience. As I said, peer review is extremely important to us and typical peer review questions that go out to reviewers also ask for the utility of the book in a, in a field. Does it cater to the audience properly? And are there any gaps or weaknesses that the author still needs to address? We are the largest scholarly book publisher, as I said at the beginning, in the world. Uh, we do publish a lot of our content across disciplines, but we are especially strong in science and technology. With social science, humanities coming a close second, also with our Paul Grave imprint. And we do have some excellent resources in clinical medicine as well. And because it's important to us that our books are used by a wide variety of audiences. We make sure that we have a robust portfolio that has multiple product types that appeal to different levels of audience uh, in an institution, in the university, or in the academic uh, community. <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit more about the composition of our portfolios um, in the next section. But before I do that, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the social responsibility for content that we uh, believe we have as publishers and what we do to focus on content that helps develop sustainable development goals at Springer Nature. 
I myself serve also on the steering group for the Sustainable Development Goals Progress at Springer Nature. And uh, it's very important to us in the whole organization and especially uh, with, the, with the SDG steering group to make sure that our content caters to and delivers uh, solutions for a sustainable world. Our sustainable development goals program is wide. We have a de dedicated series uh, on sustainable development goals where there are 17 sub series on each of the goals. And we also have other series that cater to sustainable development goals, either to one or more of the goals. In 2023, we aim to publish 3,900 titles or 35% of all our uh, English language content in with SDG relevancy. We surpassed the goal, I'm happy to report, and we published over 4,000 titles that were directly relevant to the SDGs. We also published more than 58,000 chapters across our portfolio that were directly relevant to one or more of the sustainable development goals. Overall, over 40% of the open access titles we publish also have direct relevancy to the sustainable development goals. Our series that I just briefly talked about uh, on sustainable development goals publishes cross imprints. We can publish in uh, under the Springer imprint and the Paul Graham Macmillan imprint. And we are at a stage where the series is now publishing approximately 75 titles per year. And we have SDG relevant content in all our ebook collections. Here is a snapshot of the percentage of uh, SDG relevant content in ebook collections. Then let's talk a little bit about the collections themselves, uh, since we talk about composition and the content uh, related to SDGs in these. Our collections are wide and varied, and we I do want to focus a little bit on the synthesis collection of technology, which is uh, important because it's, it's rather new with us. Uh, we acquired this at the end of 2022, so 2023 was our first full year with us. And this was uh, previously published by Morgan and Clay Claypool, um, which many of you might know about. We have a dedicated uh, team for the synthesis collection. And uh, last year alone, we published over 90 titles with our first full year. Typically with Morgan and Claypool, this would take 15 to 17 months uh, to publish about 70 to 80 titles. Uh, but at Springer Nature, we have accelerated the acquiring and publishing of content in the synthesis uh, collection. Uh, the, this is a very important collection because it caters to a specific audience, uh, specifically in engineering and computer sciences. And it also has very concise, um, a very concise format for the books that come in here. Uh, it's carefully selected to ensure that we have diversified our collection. And that's that's why we selected uh, Synthesis as a, a collection to acquire. Uh, there are multiple series under the selection, uh, under the Synthesis collection. There are 65 different series in applied sciences, physical sciences, and computer sciences. And uh, usually we have very renowned authors writing very authoritative, concise introductions to the uh, which is the topic of the book. So if you haven't already looked at uh, the synthesis collection of technology, and this is relevant uh, topic-wise for your university, I would highly recommend. Let's look at all of our collections overall. We have uh, 22 of them uh, available now. And we have new collections coming in next year. I'm going to leave it to Wouter to talk more in detail about the new collections. And uh, Synthesis is one of these collections. As you see, our collections cater to uh, academics and researchers across disciplines and uh, across uh, product types. So what are those product types? Let's take a quick peek at what goes inside our collections. So. We do have a lot of research-based books, monographs and edited volumes, which cater to researchers, which provide uh, timely summaries of research in a particular field. But we also publish a lot of content that caters to um, academic teaching, for example, textbooks at undergraduate level, at the graduate level, and also at the 
research level sometimes for PhD coursework. Uh, our textbooks are curated and written by most authoritative authors with years of experience in the field. Uh, we also publish a lot of professional books, especially under the APRAS imprint, which cater directly to professionals and practicing engineers. And many of our professional books can also be used across the board as textbooks, especially in the technology and uh, the computing space. Uh, this is very common. We, as I said, do publish some general interest books, popular science. I have one of my favorites um, on the screen here, the Curiosity Mars Rover. Uh, we published a popular book about it. We also recently published a popular book about the Japanese bullet train and the technology and the history of how the technology evolved. Uh, so we do some of these books which cater to the general audience as well. Uh, we do also publish a lot of major reference works, handbooks and encyclopedias, which are authoritative volumes on a particular topic and provide high level tertiary research content on a particular topic. And these are usually curated, edited by experienced top researchers across the globe. And with that, I will move on to how our books appear after they are published. What, how do we track their usage? Uh, the Springer Handbook of Robotics is just an example that I use here. But as I said, most of our books, uh, you can see the citations, the downloads, the social media mentions online on our platforms. And we see that our books are highly cited, which goes to showcase that our books are used not only for teaching and not only as supplementary materials, but they are used as core materials for researchers. And typically, a Springer Nature book, which is downloaded approximately 9,000 times in the first year of publication, and it's cited 40 times in the first four years of publication, which is extremely high. And it goes to show the utility that Springer books have for researchers um, in their day-to-day -day work. Now I come to one of the most exciting things that we are working on at Springer Nature, which is artificial intelligence for content. So we talked about how we have an eye for content. Now I will talk about how we have AI for content and how we use it. So I would like to look at some use cases really quickly. I won't go into a lot of depth because uh, we don't have time for detail today, but I'll talk about the services we have, uh, which we are already providing and how we are using AI tools in our day-to-day -day work to enhance our content. Uh, we have AI-enhanced translation and editing of books now available. Uh, we offer a free auto-translation service to all non-native English-speaking authors. For example, if there is an author from um, South America uh, and they are English-speaking, they want to write a book in English, but English is not their primary language and they're not confident or they're hesitant about writing a book in English. Uh, we would offer them that they write in their primary language, um, let's assume that it is Spanish, and they would write it in Spanish, and they would send us the manuscript in Spanish, or we will translate it using an auto-translation tool and send it back to them in English, and then they will edit and make sure that the book content in English is delivering uh, exactly what they wanted to say. Uh, but this helps them and say, uh, saves time in uh, for them trying to write a book in English, which is much more painstaking and time consuming if it's not their first language. Uh, whereas writing in their mother tongue is much more fluent and it's easier. So we've already been providing the service for several years and we provide this in multiple languages, um, European languages, Asian languages, and uh, there are new languages added every year to support authors across all corners of the globe. Uh, this is definitely a cost-saving exercise for our authors and editors. If they needed to employ a human translator, let's say a few years back, it would cost a lot of money and human translations for technical books especially can be quite tricky. So far, we have 200 authors who have already used the service. We have published more than 60 books and we cover 25 languages already with new languages coming in every day. 
We also provide AI transcriptions, turning audio into manuscripts. So if authors have lecture notes, they want to write a book, but they just don't have the time to transcribe them, we can support them in transcribing that content. And this can create higher efficiency and accuracy in terms of converting that content to a book. We also have learning tools available uh, for textbooks especially. So Schmigger Nature Flashcards is one particular tool which uh, is really, really important uh, for undergraduate textbooks. This is used, you see it here a cover for one of our German language textbooks, but this is used across uh, our portfolio also for English language books. Uh, it helps make books more interactive, uh, especially with teaching. And it is highly accessible. It has a dedicated app. It is also very good for students and professionals for efficient examination preparation. And it can provide a bespoke experience for uh, students and readers. And we do have different learning modes, different question types, different formats in which our flashcards can be used to cater to different learning styles and needs. Here is a tool for AI-assisted question and answer generator using flashcards and QAG, which is our question and answer generator. It generates micro-learning content for book authors, which can be used in the flashcards app, which I just showed you. And it helps lecturers in generating exam content also for their students. Uh, it uses the artificial intelligence technology and it uses the Bloom's text taxonomy to generate and adjust questions and answers for different learning outcomes. Uh, this is a really important tool to us and we hope that it will result in high value content catering directly to the needs of our customers and readers. Springer Nature Research Roundups is another service that we've been providing for several years now. It is a comprehensive selection of highly relevant literature review generated through a human machine collaboration uh, between subject matter experts, human subject matter experts, and an AI based solution by Digital Science. Digital Science uh, is one of uh, the companies that's owned by the same investment group, Ashpringer Nature, and we do collaborate very, very strongly with them. Uh, this is then sent to authors to provide an overview after publications in uh, their, their research. It can solve information overload. It can help them identify topics for their table of contents. It can help them identify missing links or gaps. And it's really important in speeding up the writing process. We started in 2021, and we have already sent out more than 2,000 Springer Nature Research Roundups to our authors as of date. And authors typically love to receive something like this, which can help them uh, build a table of contents and support manuscript writing and make it more efficient and faster. We also publish our research roundups as books. They can be created and integrated into manuscripts. And these are usually done in uh, tandem with a human expert. So the machine generated outcome is reviewed by a human expert and they also help fill gaps in the content. We also provide a lot of different tools to help put together a book using AI. One of our first books that was published using support with um, this is collaborative between, again, between human and machine. So it's not entirely machine written, but it is written by help of a machine with human experts in the loop. And incidentally, this book, which was first generated using GPT-4, it also talks about the use of GPT in uh, finance compliance and audit. And uh, it's a collaborative effort. It also received a lot of attention on German TV since it's a German language book and in the German uh, mass media and press. Uh, we did understand from this one pilot that AI alone is not enough to create and develop proper summaries and content. We need skillful human work to produce valuable outcome. But we also learned that uh, writing an academic book is 
the final step of a design process and a la large part of that process can be automated to make the process more efficient. Uh, we can generate a whole book on the basis of a set of parameters, which is translated into GPD prompts. But how these prompts are translated and what we do with the outcome of the prompts is extremely important. And authors and editors who are experts in the field should be integrated in the process because they can actually provide prompts that can create meaningful outcomes and which they can then review. So this is, as I said, the first one, we had a lot of learnings from it and we are working on new products where, uh, which are the result of human and machine collaboration. It's very important that we always have the human expert in the loop, but also that we keep using artificial intelligence and machine learning tools to enhance the experience of our authors and to make the process more efficient and painless for them to put together books and content that's directly relevant to our readers. And finally, I would like to talk about our open access program a little bit. Our op open access is very important at Springer Nature and it's no different in the books division. Uh, we are one of the pioneers in open access book publishing. We have uh, started our program in 2011, uh, which was uh, the first OA books uh, were published. I think the first one was published in 2011. And since then we have grown by leaps and bounds. I think in, 2022, we published our 2000 book, and I think we are close to, if not already published, the 3000. So we have grown a lot over the last 12 years uh, in terms of our open access program. We also have several open access partnerships, very, uh, very prestigious ones, the most important of which was the one with UNESCO signed in 2019. Uh, we also had a partnership with uh, the University of California at Berkeley to publish open access books and several others to support the transition to OA and to make sure our authors can meet their funder mandates when it comes to book publishing as well. Uh, in general, we see our open access books receive uh, two and a half times more citations and 10 times more downloads than non-open access books. So it's definitely a plus for the authors uh, who publish open access content with us. We can publish open access books. We can also publish individual open access chapters of, in edited volumes under all of our major imprints, Springer, Paul Grave, and A-Press. And we are now looking at over 200 million chapter downloads of our open access books, uh, and this keeps growing every year. And we hope to keep growing our open access content to ensure that our readers can get access to it. Here we look at a snapshot of who is using our open access books, where are they being downloaded, and we see uh, that the average downloads per OA book are much higher uh, across the world than the average downloads for a non-open access book. So this makes content more accessible and it is our commitment to make sure that we can grow our open access books program to make to ensure that all of the audiences and researchers that need the content have access to the content. It's very important to us. I talked about peer review a couple of times already in my uh, in my uh, talk today, but I wanted to highlight the peer review is very important and it's not compromised in open access books either. The processes for peer review and publication are the same for our open access and non-open access titles. Uh, it is required, the same standards are required to be met. Uh, in terms of copy editing, proofreading, in terms of analyzing content for um, permissions, third party rights, all of that uh, work is done the same for an open access book as it is for a non-open access book. As the world's largest open access book publisher, it's very important to lead the way in making sure uh, we publish our OA content with high integrity, uh, that it is same quality as all of our other content and that we cater to the requirements of our authors, uh, our institutional partners and the funder partners that enable research across the world. Uh, for our OA Books Partnership, some of our uh, high profile uh, partners include uh, the Center for China and Globalization, which is uh, 
a partnership based in China. We have a partnership with the FAO, which is an agency of the United Nations. We have one with the Lyricist Consortium, the Max Planck Society based in Germany, with uh, UNESCO, which is again an arm of the United Nations, and uh, multiple universities. I already talked about the University of Berkeley at uh, University of California at Berkeley, and. Uh, we have many other partners, including some high, uh, highly prestigious society partners that support open access publishing through partnerships. With that, I will end my bit today. If you have questions, please do post them in the Q&A box and we will take them at the end. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Swati. And um, now let's dig further into the ebook models presented by uh, my colleague Walter from the field. Uh, welcome, Walter. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start sharing my screen. There we go. Mm. Yes, it's all there. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, good day, everyone. Thank you very much for, for joining. Um, also, thank you, uh, uh, Swati. Um, I have a couple of uh, um, uh, overlaps of what you also um, uh, presented to uh, go into um, our ebook uh, uh, business models and how they can be best uh, purchased and how you can, can use them. Um, to illustrate this, uh, um, we have our book portfolio around our three major pillars. Uh, we're best in books, we're comprehensive and always connected. Best in books and what we publish and, and Swati um, um, uh, told you all about that. Um, we have a comprehensive offering that goes across uh, all of the subject areas. And um, I think one of the um, the, the the best examples of how we're always connected is how we're now talking to you um, and uh, uh, presenting our um, our offerings. We have, as uh, uh, Swati uh, touched upon, um, a large, large number of uh, publishing editors on the ground in different countries. And as Swati already said uh, in uh, with the image of her team meeting, how diverse and where everyone is, is coming, um, our editors are where the research is happening. We are publishing about uh, uh, 10,000 English language books. And on top of that, there's about 2,000 or over 2,000 German language books as well that um, we, we particularly um, trade in the German speaking countries, but it's about 10,000 high quality books that we publish every single year. Um, all on, on Springer Link um, and Springer Link is one of the most used websites in the world, uh, meaning that uh, whenever someone is searching for something, um, search results will turn up high uh, on, on the search engines. Also, we have, uh, uh, and that is a, a very important uh, uh, feature of, of our books, there is no uh, DRM, digital rights management, uh, on them. It means that the books can be downloaded, they can be printed um, without restrictions. Also, no restrictions on the number of concurrent users. So everyone uh, uh, within the same institution can use the same book at the same time uh, without limitation. And finally, and that's where I get into uh, um, in a bit, our flexible solutions give you the highest flexibility on how to uh, uh, to license the books in the best possible way for your uh, organization, matching your budget, matching um, the uh, uh, collection development strategy that you have. And this is, uh, um, um, it's, it's funny because we have a lot of examples on, on how we uh, um, our best in books. And I chose the exact same uh, uh, book and, and slide as, as Swati did to, to illustrate. And this is, uh, this is an example, but um, it, it basically comes down to all of our books um, are having significant usage. Uh, it, it's not just focused on, on, on uh, a small number of, of books, but they have a lot of usage. They have a lot of citations. 
And what you also see here on the right side, a lot of mentions. Those are mentions in, um, in social, uh, social media. That means that um, whenever someone is uh, writing uh, a tweet or something on Facebook that mentions this book, uh, we will count that. And that is also an important um, uh, impact uh, metric. Like I said, our offering is, is comprehensive. So how does this, uh, this show? Um, and for that, I, I chose to, to show you not only our offering, but also um, from, from other major publishers um, that, that are out there. I said before, we have about 10,000 books every year, and that makes us the largest uh, um, book publisher in the world. But if you, you look particularly at the top bar here, there's a number of different colors in here. And they all uh, um, represent different disciplines. So not only we have uh, uh, the largest number of books, we also represent um, a very broad offering. And we, we have books in both the science, technology, and medicine, as well as in the humanities and social sciences in a uh, uh, fairly equal spread. Whereas some of the um, um, other publishers are focusing mainly on either HSS or on, on science, technology, uh, or medicine. We have it all. Within all these disciplines, um, uh, again, and, and Swati uh, uh, elaborated on this, uh, we publish all of the different book types. Uh, monographs, book series, handbooks, we also have uh, uh, textbooks and a very strong reference works program. All of these are included in, in our offering. Also, um, we, we publish as we are represented in, in many countries, uh, we are, are publishing uh, from all different, uh, uh, different countries, giving the most uh, uh, widespread perspective on, on research. And as I started off with, we're always connected, um, always connected to you, always connected to um, uh, uh, our authors, um, always connected through our, our platform. Um, our books, again, are DRM free, allowing every user uh, within your organization to download, copy and print as they wish. Also, no limitations on the number of concurrent users. Um, so that means that an entire class of students can use the same textbook at the same time. Um, and we have a number of different business models, which I will uh, dive into, into in a second, uh, that will give you uh, the best possible way to license content that match your budget and your, your collection development strategy. We are uh, um, uh, on the ground everywhere with both our licensing staff, as well as our editors um, and our account development managers uh, to help you choose uh, the best possible way to license our content. And for that, we have a suite of business models that we have um, um, umbrella branded uh, as the Springer Nature Flexible eBook Solutions. It basically comes down to uh, four different solutions, four different uh, business models. Um, you can mix and match and choose solutions that uh, uh, best fit your organization. And uh, best of all, all of the models come with a continuing access uh, option. There is access only options, but also uh, there is continuing access, basically meaning that you have a one-off purchase uh, uh, to have perpetual access to the content. As I said, there's four different business models um, with an unlimited uh, uh, amount of options to uh, tailor exactly to your content need. We have our collections. We have our evidence-based model, access and select. We have our reference modules that contain all of our reference content. And there's an option to go for single titles. So a pick and choose uh, uh, option. Now, let me go uh, uh, in detail in that. And starting off with our collections. Um, we have 22 collections at current. 
Um, and as I said before, we are widespread between science, technology and medicine, as well as humanities and social sciences, uh, uh, offering collections in each of uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these disciplines. A collection is sold as an annual uh, uh, package. That means that, for instance, if you focus on engineering, you can license the engineering collection, and then every year you can buy the next copyright year. Whenever you cancel, then you keep on having access to everything that you, you purchase, but um, you won't get any of the, uh, the new content. Well, let's not uh, um, consider the negative. Obviously, we uh, anticipate that you are very happy with our content, so you keep on uh, uh, renewing, but it might be out of range for your budget. And I'll uh, get back into that um, in a bit for other options. What I'm very excited about, and uh, uh, Swati already mentioned that um, the previously added collection, which is at the bottom here under uh, the blue part, uh, science, technology, and medicine, our synthesis collection of technology added uh, just a few years ago. And for 2025, we are adding uh, two more collections, artificial intelligence and mechanical engineering. And we are constantly uh, looking at what can we, uh, uh, what can we further offer. Um, and this is very market driven, basically meaning that uh, we look at where do we see um, uh, that use, uh, sorry, where uh, that research is uh, accelerating, where we can uh, acquire uh, uh, good content and um, uh, start publishing that either in new collection or in uh, any of the existing collections. So for 2025, we're adding artificial intelligence as well as medical and mechanical engineering um, uh, as, as new packages. The second option under uh, um, the flexible solutions is access and select, which is our evidence-based ebook model. This means that you can grow your access every year. So you start off with uh, um, either selected uh, uh, subject collections or, uh, or everything, and you get um, four copyright years of content. So to illustrate, if you would, uh, would start with everything, you would start off with nearly 40,000 books uh, um, that you can give access to, to uh, yeah, your, your patrons. Then um, after the 12 month access to this, um, you will have vouchers available, which uh, uh, is a percentage of your spend. So these vouchers can be used to pick out individual books that you want to, uh, uh, want to keep forever. So even if you decide that you can no longer afford uh, um, the evidence-based model, you will always keep the titles that you chose and you will have perpetual access to, uh, to that. And there's additional services such as uh, uh, full book interlibrary loan and also deep discounts print, which comes down to if you want to uh, um, add um, uh, printed versions of the books, you get them at a 50% steep discount. Well, within Access and Select, our evidence-based model, there is three different plans. Um, and within each plan, you will receive vouchers to select individual titles for continuing access at the end of the licensing term. So it's basically, what do you want? What do you need? What is best for uh, your organization? So we have our basic plan that is, uh, um, in short, where you can go for individual subject collections, where you can say, for instance, I want computer science, I want artificial intelligence, and I want mathematics and statistics. The second is our smart plan. That comes uh, down to where you can get all of our subjects, or you can just go for only the humanities, social sciences, or only the science, technology, and medicine. And again, it comes with, uh, with vouchers to select individual titles. Finally, we also have our premium plan. And that basically accelerates uh, uh, the amount of, of uh, vouchers that you get. You get 20% more, voucher, uh, 20 more vouchers uh, um, than in the other plans. 
And within each of the plans, there is an, uh, an option to upgrade, to add additional copyright years. So as I said, you start off with a default of four copyright years, but you can also go back to our entire archives. And we have uh, um, upgrade options available. And thirdly, then you fine tune and customize uh, uh, your model with these upgrade um, uh, options. So in short, you see here, we have our premium, smart, and basic. And with premium and smart, you get all of uh, um, either STM or all HSS or a combination. In basic, you can select individual subject collections. Basically, uh, uh, if it comes to access, you all start off with four copyright years. And within uh, um, premium and smart, you will always retain by default uh, uh, that. So upon the first renewal, you will add the front list to, um, to, to your access pool. And in the second year, if you renew again, you have another year. So you have four years to start with, and you go with five copyright years. If you go for all, that is then around 50,000 books. Then you grow to 60,000 books, 70,000 books, and you will keep on having access uh, 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 to these books as long as you are new. Uh, within basic, um, the default is that it's always the four last copyright years, but at a small additional fee, you can also retain the, uh, uh, the, uh, the books from the first moment on. And as you can see, the voucher value for books that you want to choose to get perpetual access to is a percentage of the total fee that you, uh, you pay for, for this. And uh, within premium, this is 120%. You get 20% more vouchers uh, uh, to, to this. And in smart and in basic, it's 100%. My copy availability uh, um, is uh, in the, the premium and smart ones. Full book into library loan, also in smart and premium. And uh, the deep discount prints, where you get 50% discount on, on print books is available only with the premium program. Like I said, there's also uh, uh, ways to upgrade and you can add additional content in each of the, uh, the plans. And you can also do an entire archives upgrade. That means that you can get access back to uh, um, uh, the first book ever published by, by Springer Nature. So this if you would go for uh, uh, the, the, the smart or premium where you have all of uh, the, the subject areas, um, you can, can obtain access to uh, uh, hundreds and thousands of books in, in one go. And, and basically that would very much resemble the Netflix or Spotify model where you have access to everything and the, uh, uh, the users can just uh, uh, use whatever they need at the moment they need it and you just uh, uh, give it at their disposal. Next to our collections and our evidence-based model, we also offer our reference modules. Our reference modules uh, um, is, are a total of eight different ones, and they, are, uh, they can be licensed with a 12-month um, or continuing access. Um, reference works across all of the copyright years are included in, in each of the, uh, the modules. So you will get uh, a, a, a large pool of reference works um, available in each of these eight uh, uh, modules that are listed here. That includes biomedical and life science, medicine, computer science, engineering and mathematics, chemistry and material science and physics, earth and environmental sciences, education, business economics and social sciences and humanities. So you can take either one or more of, of these modules um, uh, with reference works. And you can complement that, for instance, with a collection purchase or with uh, an evidence-based model purchase where you add on um, uh, these, these reference modules or the reference modules that match um, the research intensity within your organization. And finally, um, we have our single titles model. Um, this gives you the freedom to license only the title that your institution needs. 
We have some minimum order uh, uh, restrictions um, in, in, uh, in some areas, um, but it's still a, a very minimal purchase. All books are in, uh, included in this offering. So including our reference works, including um, our textbooks. Also, when you license a single title, it comes with continuing access. It's a one-off purchase. Also, there's no DRM uh, um, on this and no limitations on number of concurrent users on, on these books. And again, that's why uh, uh, I mentioned there's four different plans with unlimited uh, uh, possibilities. You could, for instance, take on an access and select basic for the core disciplines in, uh, 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 in your institution. Add a reference module, for instance, let's say uh, uh, medicine, and maybe you have uh, a need for, for some, uh, some titles in uh, less intense research areas in your organization where you can just uh, uh, license individual books. So one doesn't need to go without the other. You can, can mix and match uh, uh, and you can uh, complement. Therefore, if you're interested uh, uh, in a quote, then please uh, get in touch with your licensing manager and they can tailor uh, the, the offering for you. Also the single titles uh, uh, model is available through our librarian portal. Um, where you can, can pick out uh, uh, the titles, do a search, uh, place the order, and within 48 hours uh, from acceptance of turns, uh, uh, the access is instated. We are continuously uh, working to speed this up, and I think 48 hours is, in a worst case scenario, um, we are striving to uh, uh, give you access, grant you access within 10 minutes after placing the order. And that concludes my part of the, uh, the presentation. I wish to thank you very much. If there's, there's questions, please uh, uh, keep on putting them in the Q&A. Um, I'll also have a look at the, the questions that are there um, and we'll see if they're uh, to be answered and we'll go over that um, in the last bit. And then I would like to give the floor back to Fayal. Oh, thank you so much uh, for this informative session, Wouter. Um, now we will take to our next session. That's uh, and where Natasha will be showing us a quick demo of the Labyrinth portal and how to download ebook user statistics and uh, other things, what she has on the plan. So let's uh, go to her. So over to you, Natasha. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wouter. Thank you so much, Shati, for um, your input. Uh, already. So let me quickly share my screen. And um, just a little warning, I'm going to do a demo, uh, which means that sometimes we have technical uh, difficulties. So please bear with me as I'm trying to do uh, my best to get it there. One second, please. Um... I think I'm not sure. I, I am unable to see your screen, so yes. maybe I'll just let you know. I'm sharing. You can see my uh, Yes, I, uh, I think you can see my slide deck now. Correct? It's working. It's working perfectly. Yes. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for y'all for letting me know. So hi, everybody. Welcome again. Uh, my name is Natasha Parkas, and uh, I'm Account Development Manager uh, with Springer Nature, uh, together with my colleague, Lean uh, Samara, who's also here in the call, and she's helping me. Uh, there she is. Hi, Lean. <laughs> thank you so much. Wait, I think this should go here. Hi, Lean. Thank you so much for, um, for being here at the back end, helping me with questions and um, uh, letting me know if I miss out on something. But due to time, I'm going to uh, go through the uh, quick demo um, as soon as I can. Let me go through it. Um, I'm going to do a short uh, um, uh, demo on the uh, Librarian portal. So I can show you uh, three of the main things that you can do in the Librarian portal. Just wanted to let you know if you wish to have a more elaborate session on the Librarian portal, please uh, feel free to send uh, myself or Lean uh, a, um, 
an email and we can schedule in a one-on-one uh, -on -one session if you like to. And I can show you all the features of the librarian portal, so can lean. Uh, so please contact us. Our contact details will be shared at the end of the presentation. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So first, before we move on, uh, let me just explain to you what the Librarian Portal does. Well, in the Librarian Portal, you can manage your access and uh, your usage, as you can see right here. Um, it helps you and your administrators to manage uh, the licensed content that you have. You also see a screenshot of the Librarian Portal uh, in my slide. And what, I'm, what am I going to show you today is I'm gonna show you which content your institution has access to, where you can find that, how you can manage your IP ranges, and how to download your count of five reports on the usage and denials. And like I said, um, it's a live demo. <laughs> so please bear with me if something, uh, if something goes wrong, uh, like right now. We're gonna go into the demo. So I'm gonna stop <clears throat> sharing my screen. Okay. And I think you can also see my my screen right now. Oh, yes, uh, thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you for your <clears throat> yes. Sorry <clears throat> for letting me know. <clears throat> sorry, I have a little cold. Um, but here we are in the Librarian portal. If you go to librarian.springernature.com, uh, you would find your login. And if you log in, this is how the portal will look like. As you can see right here. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, for, uh, for this purpose and uh, showing this demo, I'm actually in a test account right now. Uh, so please don't be alarmed if it is a little bit different than what you see if you log into the librarian portal. Um, and uh, please don't mind the, the names that you will see here. Uh, like I said, it's a test account. So therefore you would see uh, different uh, things in, in your portal because usually it would say hi to, to you. It would mention your name or your admin's name uh, who has access to the librarian portal um, together with your uh, email address right here. Um, so here on the left side, you would see that we have five tabs and all these tabs, they have uh, uh, multiple tabs in it where you can see, for example, your content uh, right here. I'm not gonna go into that for uh, purposes of time <laughs> right now. And uh, if you would like to know more, like I said, the offer is still there, please, send me an email and we will schedule in a one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on the librarian portal, one-on-one -on -one meeting for the librarian portal. Also uh, the content, it depends on what you have licensed with us. So therefore this could also differ. But what I wanted to show you is actually here in the tab metadata. If you go in here, uh, you can see the gay part, uh, the gay part holdings report. And uh, this is something that Wouter also mentioned in his part of the presentation. Um, here you can see all the content. Um, so a text file will be um, ready for you and you can uh, download it for journals and for books. And here you would see your licensed content. So if you would click on licensed eBooks and I have prepared this already because it took a little while to download them. So I have it prepared right here. If you click on it, it text file will open. See, it's a live demo. <laughs> Everything is happening live here. Hold on. Okay, let's wait for this here but a text file will open and um i can see now it's ready so i can show you right here so this would be the text file if you uh, download it and open it and as you can see it's not really a workable file so if you want to make it a workable file all you have to do is uh, press Control a and you will <laughs> you will be able to um select everything And that's not working right now. So I've already put that in an Excel file for you. So let me just open the Excel file. <clears throat> I 
and it's not opening also, but you can copy and paste it in, <clears throat> sorry, in an Excel file. My apologies, it's not really going, <clears throat> sorry, the way I want it to. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll come back to that and I'll show you, show it to you when uh, once the system is working. But here you can uh, you have a text file. You can uh, uh, press Control and uh, A. It will select everything, and you can just copy and paste one to one into an Excel file, and you will have a workable format for you. Uh, here below you have the open access and the free content. Uh, also text format uh, text formatted. You can click on it, download it for you. And then also, again, it will open in Notepad. And then you can uh, select everything and copy and paste it in an Excel file. Um, we also have, uh, actually, it's a recent update uh, that you can uh, also have the KBARD uh, automation uh, updated in the librarian system that you use. As you can see right here in the example, we have a few librarian systems. Um, if you are using that, you can uh, use the setup guides right here. If you click on it, it will get you to another uh, page where you can read about uh, how to set up. And what you would need is a, a unique token. You can find the unique tokens right here in your librarian portal. Once you have set it up and you've used your token, the automation KVAR should be working and it will update your journal and your ebook holdings uh, on all the platforms that we have it on right now. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is the mark records. It's also something that uh, Wouter discussed in his part of the presentation. And uh, I really hope that my example goes well now <laughs> with no technical difficulties. Um, but we have a tab for books and we have this option for journals. This is actually uh, the metadata um, um, page that was hosted on springandnature.com. It's now integrated into the librarian portal. And here you can uh, go uh, and find uh, the mark records that you would need for uh, the ebook collections. So for example, here we can open the collection. Let's say we will go for the medicine collection. You can tick it right here. You have also um, other uh, languages that you can pick and choose from. If you want to know it for databases, that's also an option. Uh, we have an option for book series as well. So you can fill out uh, the series title here. And um, let's say for the copyright year 2024, we're looking for it. So we're going to click right here. No archives. Um, also for the single titles, uh, if you have the ISBN numbers, you can fill them out right here, copy and paste them. And then we come to the filters, whereby uh, you can select to have open access into it, reference works, uh, a certain period of time, you can click and pick and choose to create the report that you would be needing. And then we have the format. It could be in the Mark 21 record um, format or XML or um, the Excel title list which I'm going to use uh, right now. And then we have grouping. Uh, you can either uh, group this Excel file in um, a split on ebook collections and a split on copyright years. For this example, uh, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to pick uh, one of them because I've only selected one ebook collection and one copyright year. So this would be the file that you can see. I prepared this, this one. So let's see if it opens. Yes, it works. It opens right here. Um, so if you hit download, it will download that for you. And you can see the book titles, the author, edition, product types, all different kind of information that you will find on the mark records that you would need um, um, for you. So here you will find all the, um, all the data. So that's something, <clears throat> sorry. Um, that I wanted to show you. I also told you while I was in presentation mode that I would show you the IP addresses. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because um, um, we usually see that customers and librarians and um, admins come back to us telling us they should have access to content and they don't have access to it. Uh, one of the things I can recommend you is please go into your librarian portal and find your IP, IP addresses and check if they are still valid. If they're not valid and you would like to add some or you would like to remove some, you can either update your IP addresses via the IP registry, 
right here. You click on uh, register and you will walk through a menu and you will be able to uh, update it for you all in once with all publishers and all platforms. Or we can update it manually for you. And then you should go to the uh, our customer service and uh, they will update it for you. Just wanted to mention, very short and briefly, it's right here. And please don't be alarmed about all these IP ranges. It's in the test environment, we just made up a few uh, IP ranges, as you can see right here. Now moving on to uh, the usage. <clears throat> Sorry. So in the librarian portal, you would be able to see uh, the performance of your uh, licensed journals, as you can see here, which is also something that we worked very hard on as Springer Nature to, um, um, to show it visu visually to you uh, how certain uh, books, uh, journals are performing. Well, you can see them right here in a bar chart, in a line chart. Uh, you can see that in, I said book and journals, but I meant only journals uh, right now. And if you would like to know the counter data about your books, that's also something I wanted to show you. We recently updated from counter five to counter uh, 5.0.2. I'm not a counter five expert, so please forgive me if I say something wrong and I made some notes just to make sure that I uh, explained the correct things uh, for you. Um, we have three tabs available, the title report, database report, and the platform report. Um, database would be if you have databases and uh, you can also see uh, throughout our whole platform, but I'm just gonna take the title report to show you. So if you click the title master report, as you can see right here, and uh, you would see all the plugins for data uh, for the books right here and for the journals right here. Um, because we're doing a book one, and I also prepared this one, um, let's go for the first one. We want to have the book requests. Um, I want throughout all platforms, but I can also pick and choose bring a link, nature.com, Scientific American, uh, ResearchGate. But for now, for the demonstration, I will pick all platforms. And the file format, um, I will pick a CSV file. And here you also have the option for a reporting period. Um, let's say for this example, we want to see from January 24 till August 24. August 24 is uh, available. Um, until now and then next month, September would be available. And if you hit download report, I should open this report. For purpose of the time, I have um, prepared this one. Let's see if it opens. Yes, it opens. <clears throat> so you can see that in CSV file, you will get this uh, report um, and you can see all the, um, the data. So let's go over this, this file. You can uh, tweak it just the way that you would need it uh, for your reporting uh, and to update your, um, your admin on your end of the licensed products that we have right here. Um, so you would see uh, the report, it's a book request report. Uh, your institution name will be mentioned here and your institution ID. Um, the metric types you can see right here and the filters that you have used. So if you're in any point of time and um, you open up this report and you think about like, oh, what did I, what were the filters? How, what can I filter on? Um, it's right here on top of um, the, in this Excel file where you can see it. And obviously it has a reporting period also uh, the 1st of January till uh, the end of August. And here you would find all the metrics. So let's go over them. You would see the titles, uh, publisher, DOI, um, the print, ISSN, ISBN, and here in column L, you can see the metric type. What I would personally do is I would add a filter to it in column L, and here you can see that you can select on total item request and unique title request. And um, just to give you a short update, um, uh, not a short update, but just to give you a definition of what is total item request and unique title request. Total item request is the total number of times uh, a content uh, or information related to a content item was accessed. And unique title request is um, the number of unique titles, for example, for books are requested by a user. 
So then for you, in your library, you can uh, pick and choose uh, which one uh, you want to see. And in column L, uh, M, you can see the reporting period total. And what I would do is go from largest to smallest, because then on top you would see which title has uh, the most um, uh, total item request or the unique title requests. And right behind it uh, in column N, till you, you can see the breakdown per month. And then you can see, for example, in April here, we have um, a lot of usage uh, for this title. So as you can see, you can, <clears throat> sorry, pick and choose um, what you would need in your reporting. You can also do a custom filtered title master report. Um, so this one was the title master, uh, the title master report. And if we did a custom ones, right here, you can see all tabs of filters are opening right here. So you can uh, click and unclick what you would need in your, uh, in your report. So say for data type, we are looking at books, then we untick journals. Um, we don't want the articles, we just wanna have book and chapters, uh, year of publication, we want to have all years. Um, the access type should be controlled and exclude open access. Um, access method is just the one regular that you can pick, so keep that ticked. And here in metric type, uh, you can go over all these type of metrics that you would need. So um, I said already, uh, I used the total item request and the unique title um, request right here. You can tick them and untick them. And we have the nose license one, um, whereby you can um, look into the denial, denial reports. <clears throat> We also have um, an elements of columns that you can add into your reporting if you would need that. You can just tick and untick them, what you would need. And then if you have made a choice there, again, the platform file format and your reporting period, which could be um, also 23, uh, January 23 till now, or it could be uh, January uh, 24 till now, whatever period uh, you would like, it says, it goes back up till 2016. Um, <clears throat> sorry, right now, and you can download the report. Also, I have um, I did a denials report, so you can see how that will look like. And before everything is not working on my end, let me just show you the file that I prepared. It's opening right here. So this would be a denials report. So it means no license. It means uh, all the content that um, your author, students, uh, or faculty members are trying to access, uh, but you don't have uh, a license for it. You can see right here, the metric, <clears throat> no license, the reporting, and here the breakdown again uh, in the months. So you can see when a particular um, content was uh, trying to get accessed. Okay, so that was um, my demo. And I will just go back to my presentation just to give you a little recap <clears throat> of what we have discussed. <clears throat> One second. Yes, here you go. So what did we discuss? We discussed um, uh, a very short demo and there are a lot of other features in the librarian portal that we can go over. Uh, please schedule your one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings with me or with Lean uh, so we can inform you about it. We also do trainings on, uh, on the librarian portal. So uh, let us know. Uh, what we discussed, we discussed, I showed you the list of your, uh, of your holdings, where you can find them. I showed you the usage and denial data for books and journals, and also the usage and denial data for a given period. I showed you what, how and where in the librarian portal you can find that. But next to, it, we, uh, next to that, we account development managers, we can also provide you with other kinds of reports. I have two examples here, uh, which are, for example, the details of how uh, your institution 
uh, publishing output with Spring and Asia. So that means uh, how many titles your authors are contributing to, or we can uh, give and share uh, details on citation data, which means um, how many times your authors um, uh, Spring and Nature eBooks are being cited, or how many times your authors are citing Spring and Nature um, titles and eBooks. So that is, uh, everything, not everything, but one of the few things that we can provide you with. Of course, we have other all, all other kinds of reports uh, available. So please feel free if you have um, a particular question in mind or a particular report that you want, please feel free to reach out to me or to Lean and we can provide, uh, we can uh, think with you and see if we can provide you all the information that you would need. And before I close off, I thought it would be a great idea also <laughs> to show you a quick live demo on uh, how do you look for eBooks on our renewed Springer Link platform. And that is what I'm gonna show you as well. So let me stop sharing my screen. And I will go to link.springer.com. <clears throat> There we go. And I'm just gonna move away from the camera because it's um, it's now here. Oh, sorry. It's right here. So this is our new uh, Springlink uh, uh, format, uh, 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 platform, sorry, platform. As you can see, it's renewed from, from the old one, uh, as you might uh, notice. And uh, I just prepared a title to show you for an ebook. So if you want to search for an ebook, you just go here to the, to the search bar. Um, you can click, you can type your title and uh, click enter. And if you do so, then you would see here uh, the improved um, uh, search page that we have. You can see on top uh, your title that you have uh, plugged in the data for it. Here you can uh, sort by uh, relevance, uh, date, published, new to old, old to new. And on the left side, you will find all the different kind of facets that we have available. So filters that you can uh, pick and choose. But I told you I was gonna show you a book, so I'm just gonna Take a book right here. Um, we also have date published, language that you can pick and choose from, the subjects, disciplines, and subdisciplines. And I suggest if you have uh, ticked all these uh, all these facets, please click update results, and that will actually give you the um, it would update all the results according to the facets that you have picked and uh, picked and choose. And as you can see right here, we have the book. Um, Nutrition Guide for Physicians and Related Healthcare Professions. So this is um, an ebook, and I'm just gonna get you from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, so you would know what to expect if you're looking for an ebook. Uh, what is the type of information that you would see on uh, Springer Link? Well, here, first of all, um, at the left side, you would see um, the cover of the book, right here. Um, uh, you can see the title, you can see that the copyright year is 2022, uh, how my access is provided, and because I'm, uh, I work at Spring and Nature, um, you would see that the access is provided by the affiliates, but this should say your institution name, uh, or how you have access to it. Then you see the download button, you can either download the book in PDF by clicking on it, and it will download it for you, and I can show you. Ah, this works. And I can show you how the ebook uh, looks like right here. You can go over it and through it. It's the whole, whole ebook right here to your disposal. And you can read it in a PDF format. You can also download it for your electronic devices, uh, such as um, um, uh, Kindle or other devices that you want to read it, uh, read your um, the ebook on. The option is right here. If we go here, then uh, on the left side, we see the uh, overview, which mentions uh, the authors and just a in a few bullet points what the book is about and how it's written. If we move up to the right side, you can see uh, the print option, uh, the print copies that you can buy um, if you wish to have it. Um, you can buy it right here. And then we move over to the overview. Uh, you can see that um, this particular ebook is a part of the book series uh, for nutrition and health. And you can see that it has been accessed um, 
almost uh, 81,000 times. The citation, it's been cited 22 times and uh, the social media usage and uh, mentions are 26, which is the alt metrics um, right here. So that's really, really good. Here you would see uh, the sections uh, of the book. And as you've noticed, the download ebook button will go with you if you scroll down. So at any given point, you have done your research and you have seen that this is the book that you want. You can hit download right here and uh, you can download the full um, ebook in PDF format. Um, so about this book, so if you click on the sections, it will, uh, on the left side, it will jump to the section that you clicked on. So about this book you have, we also have keywords. Here you can see the particular key, uh, keywords uh, that are related to, to the subject. And um, you can do a search within this book. So for example, if you're looking for something very specific, you can go here or something else that we've integrated now is you can also download uh, chapters in, uh, in PDF format. So for example, young children preparing for the future. If I hit download chapter in PDF, let's hope this works. Yes, it works. Then you can see here the chapter, um, <clears throat> only that one chapter uh, that you have downloaded in PDF that you can read now right here. Um, then, um, let's see the editors and uh, uh, affiliations right here. You can see who worked together uh, to for this book, who co collaborated together. You can see the authors. You can also see the uh, bibliographic information uh, right here. So the ES e ESPNs, uh, ISSNs, and everything else that you would want to know. And if you want to publish with us, we have a a dedicated uh, page to it. Uh, if you want to publish with us, you can go to the policies, uh, policies and ethics, and there you can read how you can publish a book with us. So yeah, that was what I wanted to show you. And let me go back to my presentation. Here we go. I think you can see my last slide now. If you have any questions, please feel free uh, to, we're now gonna move to the Q&A part. So please feel free to ask all the questions that you have. Like I said, uh, Lena and myself were, um, were available uh, for you. If you have any questions on reporting, if you have any questions on the uh, portals or uh, on the uh, platforms, feel free to, uh, to let us know. Lene, is there anything that you would like to add to everything that I've said so far? <laughs> You covered it all. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So thank you so much. It's uh, the floor is yours, Farel. Um, yeah. If you stop sharing your screen. Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes, I will. Oh, uh, thank you um, so much, everyone, um, uh, for your attention and also to all the speakers. Uh, the uh, I hope you find it really informative. Uh, now let's uh, dig into the Q and A session, and for that I would need. Your support, Lean. Uh, so uh, you have those questions. Can you please ad address to yeah. um, the panelists, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for all our presenters and for the audience for being here. Uh, Walter was doing a great job answering all those questions like uh, instantly, but I would be reading those questions also out loud for the other audience to hear those. Natasha, thank you. We will spare you uh, uh, the, the time. So don't worry about the questions. I will <laughs> manage that. Uh, no worries. Uh, thanks for everyone who has shared their uh, questions and uh, uh, concerns. I will be sharing a few questions from the ones that we have received earlier and the ones that we have received uh, today. So uh, there was one question, Walter, I believe that you have covered this, but maybe we can elab elaborate more. Um, uh, the question is, are books for lease or purchase, do they run on a special platform that requires annual payment re uh, renewal? Um, do you have a regulated ebook embargo for open access and how? But then let's per, uh, first answer the first one. Yeah. Um, so basically the answer to, to the first question, uh, um, if there are recurring payments needed, no. Um, if, if you purchase uh, a, a book with continuing access, it, it's yours. Uh, with our evidence-based model, there's, uh, you get access only for 12 months. Uh, to to the large pool of titles and 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 obviously 
if you um, if you do not renew, then you will lose access to to the titles that were access only. But all of the titles that you've purchased with either the vouchers or as part of a collection, um, they are there with continuing access. It's a one off um, one off. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do you have a regulated ebook embargo for open access and how? Um, so I, I assume that this this would be that a, a book becomes open access after a certain period of time. Um, we have experimented with um, uh, um, a third party called Knowledge Unlatched. Um, they would gather funds for uh, uh, turning books into open access. Um, at this moment, it turns out to be a very uh, difficult process to to move uh, uh, an, an already published book after a certain time in, into open access. We we are uh, looking into it, uh, but as uh, uh, Swati uh, also showed a bit more on open access books, uh, we are growing this this amount. And Swati, I don't know if you want to add anything to this. You're muted. Yeah, I'm still muted. Yeah. Yes, there you I go. Felt, yeah. So uh, for open access books, we are growing the open access program, but at the same time, we are trying to balance uh, and make sure that our ebook packages are fulfilled for our customers. So there is a balance between the non-open access and open access portfolio. Uh, the drive of how fast the book portfolio transforms into open access uh, is also based on the needs of the funders and the market. So it's not us who's driving the transition. It is the market and the funders and all of you and your institutions that are driving the transition. So we have to uh, basically meet the needs of the funders, the institutions and the authors. But we are very conscious in our editorial teams that we maintain the balance and we ensure that we fulfill the packages that we are offering to you so that you get the relevant number of titles in the packages that you have uh, subscribed to. Uh, so it's just to mention, we are ready. Um, we, we are developing this and we are ready and, and not, we are, uh, um, you know, we, we have, uh, what is it, uh, uh, close to 3000 open access books already, which, yes. which is substantial. So it is, um, yeah, and yes. we are one of the pioneers uh, in the whole open access book publishing uh, uh, scenario. Yeah. Yeah, we have another question for you, uh, Swati. How long does it take to publish an ebook? To publish an ebook? So, for us, a book is a book. The ebook is technically published first, but as soon as the ebook is published, within a few days, the print files are also ready. And our printers across the world are equipped to print and ship the books on demand. For most books, we don't uh, rent large numbers and warehouse them. Uh, it takes, uh, depending on the manuscript development, so if you have an idea today, it can take you between one to two years to finally deliver the manuscript and for us to publish it. For larger scale books, uh, like handbooks, it can take longer. Uh, sometimes it takes two to three years for the authors and editors to develop the whole manuscript. I showed a summary of how much time it takes once it comes to us. So once the final manuscript comes to us, most books will be published within a three to six month window. Uh, the smaller books, research monographs and briefs are published in about 10, 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, larger textbooks and books that require um, extra elements may take up to four to six months. And very large books like handbooks and encyclopedias can take uh, eight to nine months in the production process. But how long it takes from the idea or the proposal is also dependent on the author's uh, and how much time they take to develop the book. All right, thank you. Uh, Walter, we have a question. Uh, do we get the new titles in the collection for the new copyright uh, year? I believe you have answered uh, this question. So if they subscribe, for example, 2024, uh, what copyright years do they uh, get? And this depends also on the uh, subscription module. So could you please elaborate on that? I need to unmute. <laughs> that helps. Um, so if you if you license uh, a collection um, that comes with continuing access, so let's say 2024 engineering, then all of the books 
in engineering that we publish with the copyright year 24 will automatically uh, uh, be accessible. And also they will be accessible for you forever. If you license an access and select uh, um, uh, the evidence-based model um, 2024, then the same thing, any book that's published with copyright year 24 in the collections that you have, so let's say engineering, they will become accessible for you. With access and select, it always ends uh, after 12 months if, uh, if it's not renewed. And then uh, all of the books that are not chosen with the vouchers, the access will drop. But um, usually we, uh, uh, um, we are in, in constant communication and you know, towards the end of um, uh, the term, we'll be in touch. Um, and when you renew, there will be seamless access um, also to the 25 content that is then, then added and the 26. Um, also with access and select, we have built in a short gracing period uh, of time. So uh, um, if your, your license will end, let's say on the 1st of October and uh, due to some signing process or a manager that's on vacation whatsoever that it delays a bit, then uh, uh, the access will continue also after uh, the, the license expires, waiting for the license to be signed. So also to have seamless access available. But if you clearly decide not to renew in access and select, then the access will drop. And with uh, um, if you have a collection purchase, then it is ownership. So then you will continue to have access anyways. And uh, for the single title ebook shop, is it ownership? Is it perpetual access? It's perpetual access. Uh, about the minimum number of orders for some areas, uh, could you please clarify the minimum number? I'm not sure if uh, for the region this applies or not, but uh, let's uh, let's elaborate on that, please. Yeah. So the, the, uh, we we have a, a couple of different uh, uh, levels. Either it's uh, uh, ten books or twenty books in the most uh, uh, in 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 the highest um, uh, range. Um, I'm 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 not entirely sure for each of the different regions what what applies. So um, there there's also regions that uh, don't have uh, um, a threshold. So the best would be to get in touch uh, touch with with the licensing manager or Marika. I don't know if you uh, um, are able to to say something about this. Uh, yes, in most of the region, the official one is twenty books or five k. So 5,000 euro without VAT, but uh, depending on the case, we are able to give exceptions and go for 10 titles or 2,500 euros. The difference is if you go via the ebook shop, you can buy even one title in most of the cases of the region. So it depends what process you go through. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, let me look in further into the questions. So in the evidence-based module, uh, are the vouchers only for titles we have access to, or can we choose other titles also? Uh, could you please elaborate on that, Walter? Unmute. So the uh, um, the vouchers can be used on on the titles in your access pool. So if you have, for instance, uh, um, uh, an, a smart plan, access and select for. Um, STM, and you would like to uh, uh, to use your voucher for a book that is published in one of our humanity social sciences uh, uh, collections, then you uh, uh, cannot use the voucher, but you can license it, uh, that one book, then through single titles. So also to, uh, uh, to illustrate, yes, we do have some restrictions, but the, uh, the flexible solutions will always have an option to to license that part of the content that you're interested in. All right, before I move on, I encourage you all to share your questions. Uh, we still have uh, a few minutes. So if you still have any questions of, or if we did not elaborate on your uh, any uh, thought that you might have, please uh, feel free to share uh, your questions. We'd be happy to answer that. Um, I have a couple of questions about title lists for uh, some collections. Um, maybe um, it would be a good idea if you get in touch with us, uh, with your licensing manager, with uh, uh, me or Natasha, and we would be happy to um, 
get back to you with title lists for any uh, collection or subject area that you are interested in. Uh, just please feel free to email us um, and, and we will be happy to get back uh, to you. If you want to know what your institution is kind, currently subscribing to, or if you want to know what you can add to your subscription, also feel free to contact uh, your licensing manager or Natasha uh, and me. Um, Rina, I am not sure uh, exactly uh, what you mean. Uh, could you please elaborate? You would have liked to see something in the demo, but I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, in the single title uh, purchase available in the demo. Uh, yes, it is available in the demo. Uh, we did not elaborate much on it because we wanted you to see how you could uh, see the uh, uh, usage. Uh, but yes, we can show you like quickly how uh, we can do that. Uh, and I would advise you to uh, uh, plan a meeting with uh, Natasha. She can take you through that uh, thoroughly. Uh, Natasha, if you can just like uh, uh, pin uh, the single title ebook shop in the uh, quickly for, for our audience to see where they can access it and how easy it is uh, to be accessed. And then you can plan uh, a one-to-one -one with uh, uh, Rina so can uh, so she can uh, get a better idea on how yeah. to use the single title ebook shop. Let me, uh, I would like and, to add something here, probably Lean. Uh, I, we will be sending a survey form where we have put an option that if um, you know our customers are really interested on in having one-on-one -on -one, 10 minutes discussion about anything, any platform training, or they are they want some demo, they can reach out to us. So maybe uh, that's also something uh, we yeah. can go to, right? Until Natasha can share her screen and pin sure. up for you the uh, uh, the single title ebook shop. Uh, if you still have any questions, please, please feel free to add those. Uh, we're happy to answer them. Um, Hold on, technical difficulties here. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this yeah. was one of my concerns for now. <laughs> let's let's try. Yeah. Yes. I think I can share my screen now. Parial, also, if you can elaborate on the recording and the presentations. Hi, yes, uh, I will. During. Just, uh, I will just let uh, Natasha finish and then yes. I will just uh, go with those things. Yes, exactly. Right. Thank you. So, uh, here you would see uh, the librarian uh, portal again, and under content and tools, you will find the single um, ebooks. And here you can see already uh, actually the shop. You just follow the four steps, and that will make you um, uh, that's how you can purchase uh, a single title uh, ebooks, ebook. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's quite easy, but please. Uh, because I was not prepared <laughs> on this one. Uh, please schedule in Rina um, um, a one-on-one -on -one meeting so I can show you and go thoroughly through it uh, together. But it's already integrated into the librarian portal. So if you log in, go to content and tools and click single ebooks, you can find it right here. And you can actually uh, search for a particular ebook, search for ISD, uh, electronics, electronic ISBNs, authors even. And if you hit search, you will find it. Or you can download the list of all the ebooks that we have already and I think my system is gonna go stuck again um, but you usually would find it already here and then you can search for it confirm it it will go into your basket and then uh, you can uh, purchase it mm -hmm. but please again Rina I invite you to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me uh, so I can discuss this with you further uh also, if you do not see that you have an access to this single title ebook shop, uh, all you need to do is uh, to ask, uh, you will see the, uh, a, uh, um, a contact information for our customer service uh, uh, team that can provide you access if you already don't have uh, one and it's easy for you to activate. So don't worry about that, it's, uh, it's easily uh, done. It's very user friendly, you can just add the title that you want, search for it. And if you, your institution is already subscribed to the uh, title that you're in interested in, and you're not 100% uh, sure you are subscribed or not, it'll inform you in the, um, uh, when you see the search results that 
uh, this uh, title is uh, already available for your institution. No need for uh, double purchases. So uh, please let us know if you need further information about the uh, about training for the librarian porter or the single ebooks purchase, and we will happy we will be happy to support you further. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, That was really informative. Um, before I move on to those few wrap up uh, instructions, uh, I would like to ask Marika or Mohammed if they have something to say for their region. So, um, any closing remarks? Uh, everything was clearly covered throughout, I think, all the presenters, and we have uh, re received also the Q&As, which was interesting points that we can follow up on afterwards. From our end, all is clear. Thank you. Oh, perfect. So, uh, so uh, dear librarians, you know our team, we are just in front of you. We, uh, we are just reachable. Um, and uh, just send us any questions you have. Um, you know, you can email to Lean, you can email to... Uh, Natasha, and then they will connect you to the other expertise within Spring and Nature. This brings us to the end of today's summit. So many thanks again to all presenters, to all attendees for your interaction, attention, and questions. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we will be sharing the link of the summit recording and a certificate of attendance will be sent out to you. Um, uh, in this in the survey uh, that we will be sharing with you, you have the option to choose um, for to get in contact with the sales, uh, to get in contact with uh, either Lean or Natasha for a one on one, uh, you know, any kind of platform trainings for your institutions. So please um, reach out to us. Uh, and that just like leaves us to wish you all a great afternoon and thank you and goodbye till next time. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you and bye. Thank you. Bye.